This week's episode of Bariatric TV is sponsored by Bariatric Advantage, the most complete line of micronutrient replacements specifically designed for the weight loss surgery patient. Help support the show by ordering your Bariatric Advantage products directly from the BTV eStore. This week's show is sponsored by Celebrate Vitamins, providing the optimum level of vitamin and mineral supplementation that's tasty and affordable. Get all of your favorite Celebrate products at CelebrateVitamins.com. T2 Nashville, I want you to take notice how bright and cheery Tony's set is today. It's bright. Hey there, I'm Linda. Hi there, I'm Tony. What's going on in the world of BTV this week? Well, for starters, we have a drop zone freak that's gone to the dogs. It's the holiday, and you know what that means. Booze, of course. Did you know that there are 13 things you didn't know about weight? And a new blog that's all about accountability. And we're off. In this week's Drop Zone, we have a freak that's gone to the dogs, literally. This week's DZF is Toby, and she had this to say. I am so happy that I had weight loss surgery because now I can take my dogs to play at the beach and walk on the beach too. Nicely done, Toby. And when you're done on the beach, you can sit back with a tasty Big Train Fit Frappe protein drink just as soon as you send us your address and your phone number to feedback at bariatrictv.com, of course. Yeah, so you gotta send us that so we can send it to them and they can send you Right, your we need goods. something from you. See, you gave us something, then we gave you something, now you need to give us something again, and then Big Train's gonna give you something. See how that works? It's the give and take, give and take. <laughs> and if you wanna be highlighted in the drop zone, just send us your before and afters, before and dearings, or simply just a before picture and one sentence on why you're glad you chose to have weight loss surgery to feedback at bariatrictv.com. If we choose you as a drop zone freak, you'll get a tasty five pack of single servings from the good folks at Big Train. Now, on to the dumping ground where we'll be talking about moose. Hooch. Moonshine. Liquor. Alky Hall. I don't feel good. Welcome to the Dumping Ground. This week, it's all about booze. Around this time of year, we start seeing posts in our forum and Facebook asking if WLS patients can or should drink alcohol. And many also want to know what kind of drink is best for them. And honestly, the answer is none of them. But since we're all adults and Linda and I both drink alcohol on occasion, we really can't preach abstinence if we aren't doing it ourselves. Believe creme brulee, Kahlua sugar-free Tarani syrup, and vodka. That's a white rush, right there. You yeah. have a recipe for disaster, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> so, first of all, if you're post-op and struggling with addictions or cross addictions, please seek help now. The holidays are not the time of year to try to test your willpower, especially if you know you're struggling. Linda and I lost an old WLS pal last year at this time due to alcohol and prescription drug addiction after weight loss surgery. And this year we lost another gal from the old days due to the same thing. Both of these gals were loved by many, but they just couldn't seem to overcome the addictions that eventually overcame them. So as far as drinks for the holidays go, if you feel that you need a drink, get help please. If you think having a drink would be a nice bit of social interaction and then you can take it or leave it, then this is our advice for you. If you're still in the first year after surgery, any type of weight loss surgery, just don't do it. Your body is still healing and going through tons of changes as you drop the pounds. Plus those extra empty calories might just stall your weight loss and no one wants that nonsense. If you're past the one year mark and decide that you really would like to have a drink, just one drink, not a whole bunch of drinks, test it first at home with people that you trust. Not a six pack of martinis. No. Not don't a do good shot, idea. shot, 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 shots. Everybody! No, don't do that. Drinking alcohol after weight loss surgery is going to hit you like a ton of bricks. See, this is how it is before one tequila, two tequila, three tequila, floor. After surgery, it's one to floor. <laughs> Everything you've known about how you react to alcohol is out the window. Several types of weight loss surgery actually change your physical anatomy, so the absorption of alcohol into your bloodstream happens pretty much instantaneously. One minute you're stone cold sober and the next you can be a slobbery rag doll. 
Make sure that you are somewhere safe and with someone you can trust before you find out how exactly alcohol will affect you post-surgery. If you're hell-bent on having that holiday drink, make it a small one, a glass of wine or a low-calorie, low-sugar drink. Either way, make sure that if you're away from home enjoying holiday spirits, you have a safe way home. Here's a myth that you may have heard from RNY patients. Some say they get drunk fast and sober up fast. It may feel that way, but it's definitely not the case. Your blood alcohol level is still elevated and your reactions are still impaired, despite what you think. Case in point. There was recently a story in the news about an RNY patient years out from surgery. The man had one glass of red wine several hours before he hit the road. When he was pulled over and given a breath test, he was over the legal limit and hauled off to jail. His car was impounded and he's now saddled with thousands of dollars of fines and legal bills. No bueno. Not what you want. Chef Cat says, no bueno. <laughs> It is so not worth that drink, believe me. This holiday season freaks be smart. You don't have to drink, really you don't. But if you choose to have a drink, be safe about it. Choose wisely and think ahead about where you'll be and how you'll get home. Failing to plan is a guaranteed way to get yourself in trouble. And we definitely don't want that. We want you all to be prepared and plan for your new altered reality. Dun, 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 dun. Welcome to Altered Reality. What you reading? I'm reading the Reader's Digest. I just love the humor in these little babies. I've been a reader for a long time, although I admit I mostly read it for the cartoons and humor. But occasionally I do find a great article, like today. So you want to share that with the rest of us? Sure thing, Jelly Bean. This article is titled, The 13 Things You Never Knew About Your Weight. We knew some of them, but some others did come as a surprise. So why don't you start it off there, Tony? Factoid number one. Your weight really is genetic. And when we say genetic, we mean it's caused by a gene. When scientists first discovered this little bugger, they called it the fatso gene. But now it's called FTO. People with two copies of FTO were 40% more likely to have diabetes and 60% more likely to be obese. And those with just a single copy of this gene, way more as well. Scientists also believe there may be over 100 of these fat genes. I got a pair of fat genes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I, I wear them when I'm on my parade and stuff. I don't think they mean those kind of genes. Factoid number two, you can change your metabolism. Gaining as little as 11 pounds can slow your metabolism down. The more you gain, the harder it is to lose. So how do you speed up that metabolism, you ask? Studies show that regular exercise will head you in the right direction. Factoid number three, stress can add pounds. Stress can initiate cravings for carb-rich foods, which help to calm the stress hormone. When scientists took away high-carb foods from stressed mice, their stress hormone surged. This hormone can also ramp up your fat storage. To help with this, find time every day for a little stress relief. Yoga, meditation, or reading can help too. Factoid number five. Your mom's pregnancy affected your weight. Just as smoking drugs and alcohol can cause damage to a baby's development, so can unhealthy food. Studies compared children born after their mother had weight loss surgery to their siblings born before. Findings showed that those born afterwards were half as likely to be obese as the earlier ones. Wow. Factoid number six, sleep will help you lose more weight. I've gotten a lot of sleep these last two weeks. Why am I not skinny? <laughs> Why? Because sleep deprivation can upset the delicate hormone balance, triggering a decrease in leptin and an increase in ghrelin. Leptin is the hormone that helps you feel full, and ghrelin is the one that triggers hunger. It's a hormone cocktail for sure. Factoid number seven, your spouse's weight matters. Weight gain and weight loss can be contagious. A study showed that if one spouse is obese, it's 30% likely that the other will be or become obese too. Slimming down can affect your spouse in a good way. Factoid number eight, the fat virus. Adenoviruses and a link to fat was uncovered when researchers injected chickens with a virus and found that certain strains fattened them up. Studies done on twins have shown that obese people are more likely to harbor antibodies for these particular viruses, meaning they contracted that virus sometime, somewhere. Factoid number nine. Might as well face it. <laughs> Might as well face it, you're addicted to food. I knew you were gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> While not quite like drugs and alcohol, food can be considered addictive. Studies showed when people were shown certain pictures of foods they loved, their brain got all excited in the same parts that got activated by drugs. It's believed to have something to do with dopamine, the hormone that's linked to motivation and pleasure. Factor number 10, the ears have it. Researchers wondered why people who tasted food less intensely than others seem more likely to be obese. 
and since ear infections can damage the nerve that runs through your middle ear, researchers discovered that those who suffered a lot of ear infections had their chances of being obese almost double. Why? Because of nerve damage from the ear infections, these folks are more likely to love sweet and fatty foods. This is spurred on from a higher threshold for sensing sweetness and fattiness. Factoid number 11, antioxidants are also anti-fats. Free radicals are now blamed for making us obese. Of course, the radicals can damage the cells that tell us when we're full. The best way to avoid the damage? Load up on antioxidant-rich fruits and veggies. Factoid number 12, information is power. Most all diets are converging on the same belief that boils down to the same thing. Deprivation doesn't work. Moderation does. Four key facts diets are zeroing in on. Consume carbs in the form of whole grains and fibers. Avoid trans fats and saturated fats. Eat lean protein and fill up on fruits and veggies. And the last factoid, number 13. You can be fat and fit. Studies are starting to reveal that size sometimes doesn't matter. There are studies that show 32% of moderately overweight people have normal cholesterol, blood sugar, blood pressure, and other measures of good health. What is a fact is you need at least 30 minutes of moderate exercise a day. Just 30 minutes a day, five days a week, can be just the difference between fat and unfit or fat and fit. Well, there you have it. Bet you already knew some of these, but bet you didn't know all of them. Now, let's go freak on. One of our suggestions struck a chord for Ron Haven. Oh yeah? Which one was that? Which suggestion? Our suggestion that it's easier to stay on track long term if you journal what's going on in your life. Oh yeah, totally on board with that one, you know? Since our journals are these shows, yeah, that may, yeah, okay. Yeah. In my head it sounded... Didn't, didn't sound like you were reading at all on that no, one. No, no. It sounded mm -hmm. absolutely natural. No, it was perfectly natural. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm totally on board with that one. You know, since our journals are basically these shows we do every week, I'm all for letting it hang out. Well, so to speak. And so is Ron. Ron talked about how he and his wife Paula have been fans of BTV since before they actually found a place on the surgically altered bench. Ron also says that since his surgery, he's lost 180 pounds. Yay! But has somehow forgotten that he was surgically altered and kind of went back to eating the way he used to. Ah, uh, it's so good. Which caused him to gain back about 30 pounds. 30 pounds he's not happy about. Anyway, I guess that our episode on journaling was just in time to help out Ron. And to keep Ron honest, we're putting his vlog out there for everyone to keep a watch on. That way Ron knows that when he's writing about his journey, we are all there with him. We're watching you, Ron. Watching. You can find Ron's blog at gettingtomygoal.blogspot.com. Give it a read. And if you see Ron starting to creep back into those old bad habits, you have our permission to smack him around a little. Virtually, of course. And only because we love him. And all of our freaks. And want you all to be successful. Bam! We're done again. How does that keep happening so fast? Remember, if you have ideas for the new format of the show, comment on this post. It could get you a gift certificate to the BTV store. And remember, you can still visit the btvstore.com to stock up on all your bariatric needs. And keep those Drop Zone and Docs Who Rock submissions coming to feedback at bariatrictv.com. Sayonara! <laughs> Welcome to Altered Reality. I should be hoping it. Uh, it should probably be open if you're reading it. No, <laughs> Put your cackling in. How dry I am. How dry I am. Nobody knows. Yeah. How dry I am. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs>